Hi everyone. My name is Clara Kane. I'm a senior technical advisor with this project. I've been working on children's rights, protection and participation for more than 25 years. My teachers in children's rights were organised working children in India, who I worked with in the 1990s. Over the years, I've supported many child-led and collaborative initiatives by girls and boys in diverse contexts including collaborations with the African Movement of Working Children and Youth in West Africa. Recognising the discrimination that girls and young women face and barriers to their participation in families, communities and wider society, I really appreciate this programme by Plan and Partners to support girl-led programming in Benin and Cameroon. And I'm really excited to be part of this collaborative learning process with all of you. Based on my experience, I would like to share five top tips for girl-led programming. One. Apply the nine basic requirements. Two, start local and be inclusive. Three, take time to build trust. Four, use creative child-friendly participatory tools. And five, connect girls and young women to their peers and to duty bearers. Number one, apply the nine basic requirements. The Committee on the Rights of the Child have identified nine basic requirements for effective and ethical participation. Namely, that, that participation is one, transparent and informative, two, voluntary, three, respectful, four, relevant, five, child-friendly, six, inclusive, seven, supported by training, eight, safe and sensitive to risk, and nine, accountable. From my experience, these nine basic requirements are most useful when applied as a planning tool at the outset of programme. When staff and, and partners and young people, children, girls, boys, have opportunities to discuss these basic requirements and to really decide how they can apply them in their local context. This provides a solution-based approach to overcome likely challenges. During project implementation, the nine basic requirements also provide helpful indicators to monitor the quality of participation processes. And in the draft girls engagement strategy, we've included an annex that includes guiding questions to use each of these nine basic requirements as a planning or monitoring tool. And we hope these are helpful to you. Tip two, start local and be inclusive. To support non-discriminatory engagement of girls, it is really important to start a work at the local level, in villages, slums, camps, etc. We need to identify and reach girls and young women from disadvantaged backgrounds, seeking their views and encouraging them to get involved. This often requires careful efforts to inform and get support from their parents, caregivers or husbands. For example, a mother of a girl with disabilities may be hesitant about the possibility for her daughter to join a peer group for girls. However, if the parents' fears are allayed, the girl may be able to join peer group meetings and over time will have more confidence to speak up. Tip three, take time to build trust with girls and young women in the community. This is especially important when working with disadvantaged girls who may lack self-esteem and confidence to speak up. Ask girls, girls to identify the times and places that suit them to meet and support them in organising activities that interest them. When girls and young women have opportunities to regularly meet together in safe spaces, they're able to support one another, to gain a sense of solidarity, which gives them confidence to speak up and express their views. Tip four, use creative child-friendly participatory tools such as arts, drama, singing, photography, or visual tools, such as body mapping, community mapping, ranking tools. Such tools can be exciting and engaging and can help girls and young women to analyze and present priority issues affecting them to concerned duty bearers. Even if girls or young women have low levels of literacy, visual arts and participatory tools can be effectively used to explore, analyze, and action plan on matters that affect, affect them. Our ProTechnon team have provided links to key resources on children's participation and participatory tools, especially resources in French. And during our collaborative work together over the coming years, we are really happy to provide mentoring for girl-led participatory action research and other related advocacy processes. Tip five, connect girls and young women to their peers and to duty bearers. Support opportunities for girls and young women 
to meet locally and to connect across different communities. Create structures for girls and young women to meet and dialogue with duty bearers so that they can directly talk about the kind of services and policies they need. When representatives of girls and young women have regular opportunities to meet with duty bearers, they gain confidence to articulate their needs and to defend their rights. This is why we've encouraged the establishment of structures such as the Girls Advisory and Allies Committee at the commune level and at higher levels. It's also important to think about the sustainability of such structures. This requires advocacy with duty bearers to provide a mandate and funds for platforms for girls and also for boys to regularly participate in local governance. It also requires ongoing efforts to engage, train and mentor younger girls so that girls under the age of 18 years continue to represent their peers. It's really great to join you virtually and I really look forward to ongoing collaborations. Thank you.